I'm about to do 15 repetitions of squats with my daughter on my back. Now, I've already done some legs today. And this may seem a little silly to you, but absolutely be sure that I am taking this very seriously. One, she likes to play with me when I'm there all the time. And whenever she sees me exercising, oftentimes she'll get on my back to do push-ups. And I don't want to have to choose between getting a serious workout in and giving her the time that she wants. It's not going to have it for very often. After a while, she's not going to want to play with me. So I am, for lack of a better term, killing two birds with one stone. And this intermittent workout routine, this probably will be my last leg exercise for the night. So I've gotten sufficiently trained with the legs and at the same time able to get as much time with my little girl as possible before she gets back on her phone. Now I'm going to do some low reps on the push-ups while she's on my back. Again, I did push-ups earlier today, but this added resistance is very helpful because the more resistance you add to your workout, the more muscle you build. So with the low rep scheme, I had her on my back. And now I get to do a little bit of planking movement patterns. Again, working the core, the triceps work, the shoulders are getting more work as I did a little bit of shoulder work earlier in the day. And you can see that I'm very, very focused but at the same token I'm not overtaxed because I've been doing about five to ten minutes of exercise throughout the entire day I didn't lose anything I didn't stay sedentary I didn't skip the time that I needed to focus on the children I got to work with my clients and the day did not get away from me because I chose to do a couple of really cool, small, bite-sized workouts. A couple, a few, quite a few small bite-sized workouts. Back to the ab wheel. Again, I've explained this before. Uh, this is like doing planks on steroids. To me, this is one of, uh, I actually have fun doing the ab wheel. So I'll do about 15 repetitions on this and I'll fully extend and as I extend I'm sucking my belly button deep in toward my spine I'm not going to give any I mean zero percent relaxation to that core I'm keeping that core under stress and under tension the entire time I'm doing this and look you can even see my posterior deltoid to work in here so this is definitely great for the shoulder stabilizers. And as you accumulate these exercises and these workouts, you put them together and you're going to see your muscles will get developed. You can see I'm setting up for a close grip push-up. And I talked about before working endurance and working speed. Now I'm working more toward control and maximum time under tension really flexing the triceps as I get up. And you could see a little bit of separation within the triceps. So I don't have a push down machine. I don't have any ropes uh, to, to use the cables or pulleys. I'm getting the most out of my body and a few dumbbells as I can in order to stimulate the triceps muscle. Again, just imagine. Imagine doing this on a consistent basis how your body changes. Now I'm going into abdominal curl ups, Pilates style. As I curl up one vertebrae at a time and come down extremely slow, what I have is my belly button sucked in toward my spine. So I am working both the rectus abdominis and transversus abdominis. A lot of people don't like to do sit ups or any curling up because it does put stress on the spine and that's why we like planks and wheel rollouts better but we will take this in moderation 
because it gives us a little bit of variety. I'm doing about 20 reps here, curling all the way up and slowly all the way down and all the way back, focusing on range of motion and squeezing the abs extremely tight as I come up. See how real I'm keeping it? I let the kids mess everything up. I didn't even clean up after them. I just showed you this is sometimes what you have to be focused on what your goal is. And my goal for this day was to put in a bunch of different tiny training sessions in order to accumulate a nice, good workout throughout the day. And by the way, I don't think this is the worst thing for your metabolism either. Because if you're snacking throughout the day, but then you turn around and do a little mini workout that actually taxes you, I think that it does have a positive effect on how you metabolize and burn fats consistently. And from there, I'm going to superset that with the wonderful wheel rollouts. Absolutely. Another healthy tip I'd like to give you guys um, when it comes to this type of um, a day where you're conscientious about working out throughout the day, you can also be conscientious about your routine. Uh, I'm sorry, your, your, your nutrition routine. So if I know I'm going to do intermittent exercise, I will also do things that I know is important. I'm, I'm, I know I'll take my multivitamins and minerals. I know that when I, uh, when I exercise, I like to use L-carnitine to help mobilize fat. I know that every time I take my vitamins, uh, that I'm going to drink water. So it also gives me the opportunity to drink those extra eight ounces of water throughout the day. All right, so little different things with the uh, routine. I know that after my workout, I need protein. So if I work out a few times a day, albeit short, I might grab a yogurt here, some tuna there, a little protein drink uh, here. So I'm getting small doses of optimal protein throughout the day. A protein drink may be 30 grams of protein. A yogurt may be 12 grams of protein, whereas a packet of tuna will be 16 grams. Again, that's just snacking after the workouts. So your, your mind is linked to exercise and your exercise is linked to changing your body. And that's obviously linked to your nutrition. I'm doing 15 curl ups here. Up and I'm coming down, flexing the muscle all the way. I'm not letting myself go down with too much momentum. I am slowly coming up and slowly going down. All right. Well, Thanks for watching. Back in shape with T. I will catch you guys next time.